Kungur and the Kungur Ice Cave. This unique ice cave is in the east of the Perm region, in the town of Kungur, on the Silver River. In the past, this town was an important trading center in the Urals and was famed for its churches, its rich hunting grounds, its merchants, and a riverboat factory. Kungur even managed to stop Emelian Pugachev's rebels. Twice, the rebellious peasant army attacked and twice it suffered a defeat. At the end of the 19th century, a stone obelisk was erected here to commemorate this event. The town has grown up around it, and now this obelisk is in the very center of the town. Kungur provides a wonderful view of the steep right bank of the Silva River. The outline of Ice Mountain is visible over the cliffs. The famous Kungur Ice Cave is in this mountain. The entrance to the cave is only about three kilometers from town. If you go from the center, straight across the bridge. Of all the natural monuments of the Urals, the Kungur Ice Cave is one of the most well-known. Since the time of the first organized excursion to this cave in 1914, at least three million people have been here. Now bend your heads a little. We're entering the cave. Up until the 1920s, the only entrance to the cave was a narrow, irregular hole with ice-covered walls inside. Visitors had to crawl in on their hands and knees. A new entrance was cut, which leads you to the first grotto, called the Diamond Grotto. As you can see, the Diamond Grotto is aptly named. All year round, both its ceiling and its walls are covered with multicolored ice crystals that glisten in the camera lights. The original entrance to the cave is still here, but now it is covered with a meter-thick layer of ice. Scientists say that the cave itself is about 10 to 12,000 years old. Outside, the temperature in winter might fall to 15 to 20 degrees below zero, though in the center of the cave, it's always a constant five degrees above zero, both in summer and in winter. Tourists are mainly attracted by the ice stalactites that hang from the top of the grottos and outcroppings of walls, and by the stalagmites that resemble short ice pillars or weirdly shaped mushrooms. The formation of this unusually beautiful natural creation is rather interesting. The warm air from the center of the cave rises to the top through cracks and fissures. In winter, it looks as if the cave is breathing, with clouds of vapor coming out of it. Due to this warm vapor, the snow on top thaws. The water penetrates into the cave dissolving the rocks inside only to freeze again in the cold grottos in a variety of weirdly shaped stalactites and stalagmites. The story of the cave's exploration is full of well-known names and in 1999 a memorial plaque was placed here to commemorate the first explorers, though the actual discoverer is unknown. The first scientific explorations of the cave took place in the 19th and 20th centuries when a futile attempt was made to find traces of ancient man here. The prominent Russian cartographer Semyon Remezov made the first plan of the cave. Historians, however, say that he didn't actually explore it himself, but based his maps on the stories told by those who had. In his time, the well-known Ural historian and mining engineer Vasily Titishev also visited the cave. It was he who put down on paper the fascinating story told to him by the local people about the mythical mammoth that had allegedly dug this cave out of the mountain. In the 18th century, the prominent Russian academic Depyokhin examined the cave and in 1770 gave a detailed description of the underground route to the so-called Big Lake. At present, there are two paths to this Big Lake the big ring and the small ring. Concrete paths have been made here for the convenience and safety of the visitors. There is electricity as well. In spring, part of the cave is flooded by subterranean water and thawing snow, thus making the longest tourist route impassable. For that reason, 
tourists go along the shorter one, the small ring. The length of the path used by the tourists is approximately one and a half thousand meters. However, there are over five and a half kilometers of paths throughout these caves. There are more than 20 amazingly beautiful grottos here, each one with its own name, Polar, Cross, Meteor, Carl, and Dante. But not all the grottos have retained their original names. Their names have changed with the times. Thus, Grotto Titanic, where we are going now, has a more modern name, People's Friendship. The subterranean Big Lake is in this grotto. Frozen water makes it impossible to see the borderline between lake water and stone, creating an optical illusion and a peculiar feeling. When on the edge of Big Lake, many people get the urge to touch the mirror-like surface and see whether it is water or the glistening surface of stone. Through the underground channels, this lake comes into contact with the Silver River. The water level of the lake rises with the spring flooding of the river. Many an honored guest has visited the Kungor ice caves. In days gone by, there were special plaques here that registered these visits. Thus, in front of the central grotto, you will be shown stone steps, a chaotic pile of andrite, which, in 1940, with tears in their eyes, the German princess Victoria von Battenberg and her daughter had climbed up with great difficulty. She was the eldest sister of Alexandra, wife of the last Russian Tsar, Nicholas II. She came to see the cave just before the First World War began. It is in honor of this royal visit that the steps were named Lady's Tears. The central grotto leads us to the ethereal grotto. It has the longest vertical cavity of any one of the caves, the so-called organ pipes. Its height is about 18 meters. If you hold your breath and listen, you will clearly hear some mysterious music in the dead silence of the cave. This is music that has been heard here for many centuries. the floor and the vaults of this grotto are mainly composed of gypsum, dotted with selenite, a soft schistos material popular with stone cutters. The cave, however, has its own invisible stone cutters. They are time and nature. The invisible chisel of these masters brings life to the underground halls by placing there a great variety of wild and beautiful figures. If you try, you can see turtles, crocodiles, sharks, rhinos, even enormous rats and a horrifying human skull. The first explorers of the cave gave these figures their names. With time, guides added their own names. Most definitely, your imagination will let you see something new and unusual in these natural stone creations. It is here, among optical illusions and the guides' stories, that time flies by unnoticed. No wonder, because it is here, among the centuries-old subterranean splendor, and silence that time goes by unheeded. <laughs> 